So guys what if Naruto was king of snakes in Naruto x Anko x Femme Kyuubi movie? Excerpt from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Of the many fearsome beasts and monsters that roam our land. There is none more curious or more deadly than the basilisk. Known also as the king of serpents, this snake, which may reach gigantic size. And live many hundreds of years, is born from a chicken's egg, hatched beneath a toad, its methods of killing are more wondrous, for aside from its deadly and venomous fangs, the basilisk has a murderous stare, and all who are fixed with the beam of its eye shall suffer instant death. Spiders flee before the basilisk, for it is their mortal enemy, and the basilisk flees only from the crowing of the rooster, which is fatal to it. A six-year-old Naruto Uzumaki is running away from a mob of villagers because it's his birthday, but to the people of Konoha, it is the Kayubi festival with its most promising attraction, the fox hunts, even after five years, the foolish leaf villagers have not let go of their hatred for the nine-tailed fox that attacked Konoha out of the blue and was then sealed into the newborn Naruto by their beloved hero, the fourth Hokage, who died that night. The councilmen have usurped Hiruzen Serutobi's authority many times to make the poor boy suffer. And never know of his heritage and destiny, but that changes tonight, for as of this moment, the reinstated third Hokage has escaped the distractions of paperwork to go find the secret son of Minato Namikaze before the villagers kill their pariah, with his trusted Anbu behind him, the Hokage finds a cluster of villagers near the fence of the forest of death as they are cheering at their handiwork. That all comes to a halt when the Anbu surrounds them and the third Hokage steps forward and gives the order, take these filths to Ibiki, nothing restrained, I want to know who started this, and what they have done to Naruto Uzumaki. The Anbu restrain the many shinobi and villagers that are now protesting, most cry that they are only doing what their hero, the fourth Hokage, had started, one cries, it's too late. The demon brat will never see again. Nor will its lying voice taunt us or deceive us with its innocent act. That hits a nerve for Serutobi and the Anbu weasel and snake, the female Anbu wearing a snake mask uses her snakes to strike at the Chunin's nose, the poor fool wails in pain as he is taken to suffer more pain while the Hokage picks up the wounded boy that was meant to be seen a hero. Naruto has kanai slash marks going vertically down each eye. His eyes covered with blood and some sort of chemical to prevent the Kyubi's healing. A horizontal slash goes along where his throat is, showing that his vocal cords are damaged, his whole body is covered with cuts and bruises from the many beatings the villagers did to him, Serutobi was shaking with rage at how far his village has fallen. If only Jiraiya or Tsunade were here to help, but they were not heard from in years, he would have to send another letter to the both of them to do their job as his godparents. The Hokage quickly body flickers himself to Konoha Hospital with Snake following behind, Weasel stays grounded in his spot as he saw that some of his clan members, the Uchiha, were among the ones that hurt the boy, he wondered if this is what his mother felt when her best friend died during the Kyubi attack and was still in a state of depression and staying a housewife, was there any hope? before his father took action against the Hokage and the rest of Konoha? Meanwhile, the Kyubi was forced to watch inside his Mindscape prison as the boy suffered from the villagers since Naruto's days in the orphanage, if only he could free himself from his cage, he would destroy these monsters in human skin while taking the boy far away from being the human's weapon or plaything, if only he had the power to overcome the Sharingan of that masked Uchiha that forced him out of Naruto's mother, Kashina. Suddenly, a thought crossed the angry fox's mind, when the Shinigami sealed him within Naruto. He also placed another soul within the seal that belonged to a creature that was defeated by a young boy that seemed as special as the kit, a creature that was just as ancient and powerful as the Kyubi himself, since they were stuck within Naruto, its powers had little to no effect on the biju or their container, Kyubi knew that this would be an opportune moment to get his revenge on the Uchiha and anyone who dared threaten his kit. He trudges to a dark corner of the cage to where his roommate slept, hey, Scaly, wake up, I need to discuss something with you. The darkness stirs as bulges of dark green scales moves in twisting motions. A giant serpent appears, raising its head from its 70 feet long body to meet its golden gaze towards the Kyubi's red slits, she hissed in irritation for being awakened from her peaceful rest after not having to deal with magical elitists and purges to mess with her mind, although her caretaker was a great and powerful speaker, hopefully the child with the lightning scar and glasses would destroy that terrible progeny of the great Salazar Slytherin. What do you want? Annoying Kitsune, she hisses angrily. Our container, Naruto Uzumaki, has been beaten by these foolish humans for the last time. His eyes and vocal cords are scarred by their cruelty. I ask that you help me heal our container so that we can train him to destroy those who'd use their power to make him weak. With your death gaze, snake speech, and my chakra, he will be an unstoppable force against those that are his enemies, like that thorn in my side and his pretender of a student, Madara Uchiha. The Kyubi grinned at the thought. 
The magical queen of serpents hisses in contemplation at making a snake heir in this realm, she remembers viewing in Naruto's memories that snake Anbu watching out for the boy while also being belittled as the snake mistress, perhaps the boy can become a summoner to these chakra wielding snakes, while also maybe turning a mistress into a princess, and later a queen. Very well, we shall bless this child with our gifts so that he may in turn destroy our enemies, bring respect to our names and species, and bring about a great change to these elemental nations, she hissed in reply. The Kyubi and Basilisk get to work as the two pour their red chakra and green aura into Naruto's body, planning on how they will introduce themselves to the child. Scene change Naruto slowly woke up to find himself not near the forest of death where Habi Chan lives. He concludes that he is in the hospital, from what he could feel and hear of hospital equipment beeping, his body all bandaged up like a mummy that he only had his fingertips free so that he could feel the hospital bedsheets. Naruto is happy that Gigi and Habi were there to save him before he met his end, however, the moment was ruined when a large hand grabbed Naruto's chest, pinning him down so he couldn't get an up and press the help button to alert Hokage Gigi and Habi-chan. The shinobi's free hand moves up to pull off the bandages on Naruto's eyes so he can see the look in the demon brat's glassy eyes before he kills it for good, he removes his hand from the Jinchuriki's chest to pull out a special kanai that Danzo and the council gave him, with all that has happened, they had no need for a broken weapon. When the bandages are off, the chunin gasps in surprise at seeing that the boy's new eyes, the vertical cut marks are now nearly healed, but the would-be blind eyes are now a creepy golden yellow with slit marks, like the traitor sage, Orochimaru, but the yellow colors all around his eyes except for the abyssal black slits, that held no white that could be seen, giving Naruto a more bestial look. It was the last thing the Chunin saw before falling backward with a dead look in his eyes, a nurse walks in and screams in alarm at the fallen body that Serutobi and the snake Anbu, Anko Mitarashi, come running towards Naruto's room, before they could enter. Naruto hears a voice inside his head, telling him to cover his eyes while he wonders in bewilderment on what just happened. Naruto cover your eyes from Gigi and Habi, don't let them see your eyes until we tell you to, listening to the deep voice in his head, Naruto puts both hands on his eyes when the third Hokage and Habi enter and see the dead body, the Hokage notices the kanai in the attacker's hands and knows that he would have words with his advisors for this, but still, what could cause a chunin to die with a scared look on his face? Perhaps Inoichi could investigate that but right now, Naruto was top priority. Naruto, my boy, it's Gigi, Habi is here too, what happened? Why do you have your eyes covered? The doctor said that you are now permanently blind, can you actually see? The Hokage questioned the boy while trying to move Naruto's hands from his eyes, only to find that the Uzumaki boy was stubbornly keeping them shut. Naruto, it's Habi-chan, please show us your eyes, if you do, I will show you my sexy face, she smirks mischievously as she removes her mask to show her brown eyes and flawless features to go with her spiky purple hair, Hiruzen rolls his eyes at Anko's flirting but he notices that Naruto's scrunched up face has softened. Naruto then feels a tingling feeling wash over his eyes as if another layer was placed on his eyes like contacts, but more magical, you can show your eyes now hatchling a feminine voice hisses in his head, tell them if Gigi and Habi want to learn more about your changes, bring the Yamanaka and join them in your mindscape, the other voice spoke to Naruto. Naruto opens his eyes to find that Anko had one of her snakes on his lap that made him jump a lil before speaking in a hissing sound that no human could understand, wow, huh, hubby chan got me good with that prank, I am so going to get her for that. What? How is this possible? Even Lady Anko or Lord Orochimaru do not possess the gift, it is an honor to meet you speaker. Anko's snake hissed back, making the occupants widen in alarm at this unexpected development. Wait? Hold on? Speaker? As in, I can talk to snakes and understand them now? Awesome, Datbeo. Naruto clapped for joy at his new cool ninja skill. Calm yourself, speaker, there is much my mistress and the Hokage would like to know about your new eyes and skills, can you try speaking in the human tongue? The snake asked the boy. Naruto wanted to learn more about his eyes, but he complied to what the snake was saying as Gigi and Anko looked at him in confusion and amazement at his mysterious changes. He opened his mouth to try to say how beautiful Habi Chan looked, only to cough in pain as his throat hurt in trying to speak like he normally did. Anko patted his shoulder while Naruto calmed his breathing so that his throat didn't hurt anymore. He looked to the snake summon that lay on his lap as he stood up in his bed and began hissing frequently on what he needed her to say. Forgive the speaker, Hokage and Anko san. The damage to his vocal cords was deep that he can only now speak the noble tongue of the snakes and nothing else. Oh, and mistress, he says you have a very pretty face that it is, as you say, sexy, the snake summons replied with Anko blushing at Naruto's reply while the Hokage gave a silent giggle. 
Naruto. Do you know how this happened? Asked Serutobi Gigi, passing a mirror to Naruto to look at his new eyes. Naruto gasps as his new eyes now showed they were a bluish turquoise snake eyes that flashed yellow when he turned the mirror to his sides, Naruto hisses to the summon as it translates for him. I do not know Gigi, but I have been hearing voices in my head, a cold shiver runs up the Hokage's spine as he hoped that the Kyubi would not reveal itself so soon to Naruto, but what were the other voices in his head? The voices say that you must summon the Yamanaka clan head and have him take Mistress Anko and yourself, Hokage-sama, into the speaker's mind in order to find the answers, Anko-san, will you summon me again to accompany you all to the speaker's mindscape? I must return to Ryuchi Cave and inform Manda-sama and the White Snake Sage of this development, the snake disappears in an exploding cloud of smoke as Serutobi tells Anko to get Inoichi here immediately. A few minutes later, Inoichi and Anko return as Anko once again summons her snake familiar as they prepare to enter Naruto's mind, the Hokage, Anko, and snake hold onto the Yamanaka's shoulders as he places his hand on Naruto's forehead and they all enter Naruto's mind. Mindscape the Hokage and his entourage travel down the dark wet hallway towards the large bars where the form of Naruto was waiting for them. Naruto had no idea that this is what his mind looked like and he felt sad a little, the Hokage and Anko weren't doing any better, feeling guilty on how such a special boy to be put through mind-shattering experiences that made his mindscape so dark and foreboding. When they reached Naruto the eye of the Kyubi opened as his giant form revealed itself to the spectators, greetings, puny humans, I am the nine-tailed fox, Kyubi introduces himself. Wow. You are so big Kyubi. But if you're inside me, does that mean the villagers were right in calling me a demon? Naruto's attitude went from amazement to depression at realizing why the villagers hate him so much, not realizing he is talking normally so everyone else could understand him. The Hokage quickly went to comfort the boy and then get some answers from the Kyubi, Naruto, you are not the biju, you are simply the scroll that holds the kanai, not the kanai itself, I tried to give you a normal life Naruto, but the pain of the Kyubi's attack is not so easily forgotten or let go of by the people of Konoha, speaking of which, why Kyubi? Why did you attack us and letting many families be destroyed the night Naruto was born? Silence monkey. I wanted nothing more than to leave your pitiful village after being released from my previous holder, but the man who freed me also took control of me using the same blasted Sharingan that Madara used to force me to battle Hashirama. Although the mask man claimed to be Madara Uchiha, I know it wasn't him, Kyubi growled in irritation while the Hokage and the entourage were stunned at learning that a rogue Uchiha was responsible for the disaster six years ago. You're lying. How do we know that for certain demon? Serutobi retorted, not fully accepting the nagging feeling inside him that it was not entirely the Biju's fault. After all, Biju were considered beasts made entirely of chakra that had no mind or heart, yet here they are, having an intelligent conversation with the strongest of the nine tailed beasts. Kayubi snorted before waving one of his tails onto the watery floor to show Naruto's memory of that night. The audience, including Naruto himself, were stunned to see Naruto being the son of the fourth Hokage. Minato Namikaze, and a beautiful redhead named Kashina Uzumaki, they watched as an orange masked man with one eye hole showing the Sharingan used newborn Naruto as a hostage before taking Kashina away as Minato prepared to do the unthinkable to save Konoha and his child. The scene changes with Naruto on the sealed pedestal as Kayubi is bound and about to be sealed inside Naruto while Kashina argues with Minato against this action. Hearing his parents' final words after being stabbed by Kayubi's claw, the memory disappears, and Naruto starts crying at finally knowing that he had loving parents and what they thought of him. Anko gave the young Uzumaki a hug with her snake summon giving a coiled hug too. The third Hokage and Inoichi bow their heads in shame at the truth of the revelations and how low the will of fire was barely a candle of itself after what the village has done to their savior's progeny. Then, Naruto calms down from his comforting hug with hubby Chan and walks on over to the Kayubi. He is small enough that he squeezes through the large bars while Anko, Serutobi, and Inoichi are scared on what the Kayubi might do to the boy. Naruto looks into the Kayubi's eyes before saying, I should be mad at you for killing my parents that night, but you didn't want to or ask to be sealed into humans like me, I am sorry for thinking the same way the villagers think of me, and thank you for helping me survive these past few years and giving me these new cool ninja powers. Naruto then hugs the Kayubi's muzzle which startles the Kayubi and the entourage at this display of forgiveness and acceptance. Kayubi comes out of his bewilderment and inwardly chuckles before using his tails to pull Naruto off his nose and place the boy down to talk to him, you're welcome kit, I may be a powerful chakra beast, but I've learned to not place the sins of the parents onto the children after what you've been through, and although I have helped your Uzumaki genes in healing from most wounds, the eyes and snake speaking are not my doing. 
Kayubi then moved to the side as Naruto and the others heard something coming towards them in the darkness of the prison. Anko's snake had slithered towards Naruto and wrapped herself around his neck to see if the white snake sage spoke truly. Out of the shadows came the towering form of a giant snake that looked smaller than Manda yet held more power and majesty. Anko had never seen such a beautiful creature. The great serpent hissed before staring at her container with everyone watching. Greetings child. Although your father summoned the reaper to seal the Kyubi away, he did not realize that the reaper held my spirit as well. It would seem the gods deemed you needed my help on your journey in life. I am the basilisk king, or in this case, queen of the snakes. The basilisk introduces herself. Everyone being able to see and understand her inside Naruto's mindscape were amazed at this. Naruto and the others are surprised that Naruto had not one, but two powerful beasts sealed inside him. Anko's snake, who was still coiled around Naruto, went to greet the legendary serpent, greetings chiefest and greatest of the serpents. I am one of the snake summons of this realm. We have heard of your legend and have wished to bask in your grace, the leader of our summons the white snake sage, foretold that you would come. What would you ask of us, your majesty? I ask that you allow this child, whom I have blessed with my eyes and our noble tongue, to sign your summons contract, he shall be instrumental in bringing your clan to greatness, along with your present summoner. The basilisk then turns to talk to Anko, Snake Anbu, please help train my heir so that you both may surpass your hated former teacher, only then can you reap vengeance upon him by becoming true sages under the teachings of the snake summons. Anko was stunned at that blunt remark on how to get back at Orochimaru, however, she rubs the back of her shoulder where Orochimaru's curse mark stains her body, chakra, and soul, she would not dare enter Ryuchi cave until the cursed brand is off. The basilisk notices the woman's distress and then turns to Naruto to give him later instructions, she will help destroy the mark, once she is free from the seal with Naruto's help. Naruto, for you to access more of the Kayubi and myself, you must unlock the seal in order to free me from this confinement. The Hokage's eyes widen at that remark and is quick to retort. He can't. Naruto does not hold the key to the seal, also, if you and the Kayubi were to be released chaos would follow across the village, the Kayubi rolls his eyes at the monkey's overreaction. I will stay inside the boy even when the seal is unlocked, I am not comfortable leaving until that wannabe Madara is dead and nothing remains of his or Madara's ashes, but Naruto will have full access to my chakra once he passes the biju tests. I on the other hand am only a spirit. I shall require your help Naruto in my rebirth, but this will only be privy to Naruto and the snake summons, the basilisk hisses at the Hokage, Serutobi grits his teeth but submits to the beast's conditions. Naruto squeezes back through the bars as the group prepares to leave the mindscape, before Naruto exits with the others, he turns to his two tenants, see, or hear you later, but what are your names? Kayubi sounds like a title and the basilisk just sounds more like an animal name. The two promise to tell Naruto once they are out of his mind. He accepts that as the humans and snakes summon exit the mindscape. Back in the hospital room, the Hokage commands Anko and Inoichi to keep this S rank secret from everyone. He then heads to his office where he will send a message to the Toad summons on getting the key to the Kayubi's seal. Inoichi heads home, and Anko stays with Naruto as she talks to her future pupil on training plans. Naruto isn't hearing though, he listens as the basilisk names herself first with the nine tails following afterwards. I was named Kendra by my maker. Call me Kendra. Little Storm, she teasingly calls Naruto who blushes at his cute nickname. Third Hokage, why have I been summoned when you could have called any other toad to send a message to Jiraiya? Asked Jeratora. Apologies, Jeratora, but we have an emergency, Naruto has made contact with the Biju and now knows of his lineage and his burden, we need to see the key to the seal in case there is a crack within the Kayubi's seal, explained Serutobi. I doubt the boy is ready to handle exercising the Kayubi's chakra, however, Jiraiya has instructed me that when he makes the boy his apprentice, he will summon me when he feels ready to handle the chakra and be a worthy summoner of the toads, Jeratora replied skeptically. The third Hokage frowned at this as he had Anko and Naruto step out from the shadows with another woman who appeared to be a priestess. Unfortunately, Jiraiya has not even attempted to meet Naruto, nor fulfill his duties as the boy's godfather, for that, Naruto has been hurt by the villagers for thinking he was the Kayubi and he has gained help from another summons, can you give the key to the seal to Tagori-sama, eh? And I did say I would shorten the three snake attendants' names from the rise of Uzushio story, so Naruto can get the help he needs? His pled was met with the cynic toad yelling in anger, never. The toad summons are the best summons to help the child of our previous summoner. No other summons is fit to help Naruto reach his full potential. And how do you know what Naruto's full potential is? Anko growled, Naruto was angry, but his eyes were covered by a blindfold to hide his unique dojutsu. 
He must be a prodigy like his father, Minato. Also the prophecy we gave to Jiraiya is centered on you being his apprentice to make big changes to our world. Jiratora quickly covered his mouth at revealing such sensitive information that Naruto was not ready for. Oh, you naughty, naughty toad, Tagori giggled under her sleeve to hide her growing snake fangs. The gods decreed that all animal summons must not share significant revelations bestowed upon their leaders to their contracted summoners unless given express permission by the deities or the contractors have passed the trials, otherwise humans will get the stupid idea to try and bend prophecies to their own desired ends, has your current summoner passed the trials, or has even Gamamaru been given permission to share such things? Kami or her siblings have not visited the realm for some time, only the Shinigami appeared when the foolish mortal used the reaper death seal, but not to share any prophecies. H how do you know about that? Jeratora shook and prepared to poof back to Mount Myoboku, but was stopped when Tagoras neck lengthened and she bit Jeratora, causing him to be paralyzed. Because I am one of the trial masters of Ryuchi Cave, foolish frog, Tagoras voice changed and her snake features began to show on her eyes, skin, and teeth, Jeratora's eyes widened with fear at soon he will be eaten by the toad's hated rival. Wait, Tagoriheim, I need him alive, Naruto commanded in parcel tongue. Ah but I haven't had toad meat for so long, and he just looks so tasty, Tagori licked her lips in hunger. Kendra Sama says that she needs this toad for her to be reborn. Just take the key seal from him and give him to me. I will bring him to Ryuchi Cave with me as you, your sisters. And the rest of the residents of the snake realm can witness the birth and creation of the mighty basilisk, without letting the pedo sage finding out, Naruto informed Tagori. His answer calmed the snake priestess down as she looked forward to seeing the prophesized snake queen that Kami had shared with their white snake sage more than a hundred years ago, it was only for the snake summons in answer to their prayer of becoming a great summoning clan. After rolling out Jeratora's scroll belly and copying it onto another scroll, Tagori had Naruto open his mouth wide and forced him to swallow the scroll down his throat, Anko chuckled and thought of using that technique on the prisoners by thinking they are forced fed an explosion tag or something that could go off unless they sung like a bird, the third Hokage had to keep his distance from Anko's tortured dream look. Once Naruto had finished digesting the key, he and Tagori took Jeratora and reverse summoned themselves back to their home, leaving the Hokage and the snake mistress to continue their work in Konoha village. Flashback and how soon till she hatches? A little snake asked as many of the snake summons gathered around the white snake sage's shrine. Patience, hatchling, the time is soon upon us, said the white snake sage. Not soon enough. Why should we be seeing the birth of some half-breed that is hatching from a chicken?" said Manda, aggravated at no longer being considered the strongest of serpents now that a basilisk was about to be born. You watch your tongue, Manda. Although strange the birth of our next most powerful member, she is still one of us, you will be her strongest champion should the toads try to come take back the boy, still clinging onto that prophecy that was not meant to be shared yet, refuted the master of the snake summons, Manda calmed down and grinned at the coming rematch against Gamabunta and his ilk. Suddenly, the sound of cracking was heard, and the cave went silent, no hisses could be heard from any of the snakes, Kendra's tiny head popped out of the tiny eggshell, having bluish-green colored scales and a crest of spikes atop her head like a crown of thorns, her eyes were a bright yellow as they stared hungrily at the soon-to-be-dead Jeratora. Kendra soon began to grow at an accelerating rate, thanks to the nature chakra of Ryuchi Cave working symbiotically with her inner magic, until she was as big as a young ball python, big enough to devour the toad headfirst and all, all the snakes shivered in fright and awe at her mighty gaze that blinked at her surroundings, her death gaze being turned off since she's had nearly a thousand years in training to shut off her powerful eyes abilities. Naruto walked up to the newborn Kendra without fear and slowly petted her crowned head and ridges along her back while she continued to digest her first meal in this realm, happy birthday, Kendra Chan. Everyone hissed in agreement and reverence at their newborn queen. The snakes held a celebration as a feast was prepared with lights and music playing to commemorate the birth of their new queen. A. And think what Ryuchi Cave looked like during the Boruto episode when they first saw it. Even though this one is no genjutsu, Manda had stuffed his mouth of a large boar, A. And hey a big snake like that needs more than human sacrifices to fill his belly. While other snakes had rice bowls of chicken, beef, and surprisingly spiders which were Kendra's favorite snacks, A. And most likely dreaming of eating that one grown-up arachnid that was raised by the half-giant, they washed their food down with rice sake and water. Thanks to the offerings from Manda's loose connection with Orochimaru in rice country, when not asking for sacrifices, the water was naturally clean thanks to their cave system that filtered out their surrounding wetlands. After eating his fill, Naruto looked at Kendra in his lap as he caressed her smooth scales, 
much to the reborn basilisk's delight. So Kendra Chan. What now? Are you going to start training me with the snake's help so I can be a strong ninja? Or am I going to practice with my cool new eye powers? Naruto asked excitedly. Kendra lazily raised her head to look at Naruto in the face as she pulls off his blindfold with her tail to look into his protected green filtered eyes. Your training will soon come, my little storm, but first, you and I must have a stronger connection to access more of my gifts I will grant you. You must see my life as I've seen yours, so that our bond may be deeper and stronger. For that to occur, you and I must perform a familiar bond. Naruto squinted his eyes in confusion at what Kendra had said. What's a familiar bond? He asked curiously. Kendra gave a hissing chuckle at the child's eagerness to learn. A familiar is any kind of animal or animal spirit that serves a magic-wielding witch or wizard in many ways. Whether it be spying, serving our witch or wizard, sending messages, and more, it's like the shinobi that have animal summons already in this realm, but familiars have a deeper bond to their contractor. For you to fully be bonded with me, I must bite you. My venom is the most powerful toxins ever, but when used in a bonding manner, the magic in my venom will share my thoughts and feelings as you strive to endure the pain my venom will do when it courses through your veins. Naruto shivered at having to experience more pain. Even when he now was far away from the mobs that tormented him, Kendra saw his pained look that she flicked her tongue in tickling his whisker marks. After getting him to laugh, Kendra continued. Fear not, little storm, I know that you will not succumb to my venom. And once the pain passes and the bond is complete, you will be blessed with being immune to all manner of toxins and venoms. As well as having heightened senses to taste your dangerous surrounding smells that cannot be sensed by just your nose alone, your body shall sense vibrations and heat signatures better when you're not using your eyes. If you want to learn more about your gifts of sight, you must pass the test, my little storm. I don't want to give any more spoilers. Kendra wiggled her tail as if she were wagging a finger. Naruto narrowed his eyes in determination as he gazed into his sensei's golden eyes, still in his torn orange jumpsuit and jacket. Naruto rolled up his left sleeve to show his bare arm signifying that he was ready. Kendra struck quickly as her jagged teeth and fangs bit into his arm, she slithered back to see her slanted oval shape of her 24 bite marks, with four of them being slightly bigger than the others to show that those were her upper and lower fangs, Naruto felt sluggish immediately as he fell to the floor, lying on his back as searing pain rushed through his body, his eyes became foggy before blacking out to unconsciousness. Naruto awoke in his mindscape as a green current slithered from him and led him to the Kyubi's den, however. The current turned left as part of the wall changed to look like an ancient stone archway decorated with snakes while the entryway was filled with light. Naruto looked at Kayubi in concern as the towering fox simply sat in his barred den uncaring. This is your trial, Naruto, yours alone, I can't interfere, don't tell me you're now thinking of chickening out now. Kurama grinned while still having his eyes closed. Naruto growled at first, before taking a deep breath to look at the gateway and entering Kendra's mindscape, after passing through, the gateway disappeared and it turned back into the rest of the damp mind wall. Scene change Naruto found himself on the shores of large black lake that was surrounded by a shady forest of hills and mountains all around in a lonely cliffside along one side of the lake. The young Uzumaki then spots a boat riding across the still waters with a lantern in front of it and four people riding it till they reached the shore near where Naruto stood. The four adults came to shore without using any rowing oars as the first two to touch the sandy beach were two men. One having a mane of red hair that matched his beard. Wearing a dark red robe, gloves, and a cape with a silver sword dangling off his left side. The other was mainly bald on top with pale blonde hair flowing down from his sides and having a triangle trimmed beard, while sporting a dark green robe that showed his pale hands, one hand having a silver ring shaped like a coiled snake with a green gem in the center, while the other seemed to be petting a tinier version of Kendra. The men then gentlemanly bring the two ladies to shore as they gauge their surroundings. I must say, Rowena, your vision has led us to quite the scenery, perfect for a little feast, said the orange-wearing woman that held a golden goblet in one hand while her other pulled out a stick, which were wands from what Naruto could guess, and summoned a large blanket that held all sorts of foods for the four friends to eat from. Verily, Helga, this is where the warthog with warts from my dreams led me, I know for certain that this would be the sanctuary for our children and other magical children to learn and grow in their magics, away from the persecution of commoners and their inquisitors, Rowena Ravenclaw spoke in a calm and soothing voice. Ha! Let those foolish non-magic folks come. I will drive them away with my dueling skills with a wand and my blade, boasted the red head. Calm yourself, Godric, it will take more than just our wands and your blade to secure the safety of our soon-to-be castle, said the wizened green one. Indeed, 
Salazar, our skills in charms and runes will make it so that our school cannot be found or disturbed in any way, said Rowena Ravenclaw. But I worry when the muggles use deception to get children that are gifted by magic but are not among our magical families, they would return to their masters and alert them to our location, I think we should hold off on allowing those children to intermingle with ours, Salazar Slytherin continued to stroke Kendra under his sleeve to keep his paranoia in check. Salazar, if we do put off allowing gifted children to enter, then we are no better than our present persecutors, we will teach them to survive and handle the world we live in, Helga Hufflepuff lowered her goblet to scold her old friend, Rowena rubbed her diadem on her forehead before sharing a thought. Then Hogwarts will need a guardian, a little monster to frighten away those who would unworthily use magic for ill, she gave the wizened Salazar a knowing look as he thought of Kendra hidden in his sleeve. Hum, agreed, however, it will be the duty of my descendants to care for and call on my little princess should the case be dire, verily, she will be an excellent obstacle along with our spells and safeguards to handle our enemies should an army march at our front door, Salazar agreed but still having his paranoia whispering in the back of his mind. HMPH, although if something were to force the little monster to attack the innocent within our walls, my blade will have to put her down, Salazar, basilisks may live for a long time, but time can befuddle the deeds we make present, if that were to occur, my descendants must give my sword back to the goblin makers that crafted it, Godric Gryffindor warned as his hand went to the hilt. Kendra hissed in anger at the mon's faith in her abilities. It was only the soothing hisses of her caretaker that calmed her down as the four sat to where Helga made the feast, as they ate and talked, Salazar had his three friends give a magical oath that they would not disclose in memory, word, or writing, that Kendra's lair and his secrets would die with them, the three agreed to calm the growing obsession within Salazar, after eating the four founders of Hogwarts raised their wands in the air and consecrated the land around them. Naruto was in awe as he saw time fly around him and a tall castle formed and stood atop the cliffside. Naruto was then spirited into the castle walls as he flew past moving staircases, talking pictures, and glowing torchlights, it was then Naruto came to a girl's bathroom on the first floor, the sink magically opened to reveal a trapdoor that led down into Kendra's dark chambers below, he passed by a circular door made of metal snakes until he reached the innermost chamber of the Chamber of Secrets. He saw that Kendra became beautiful queen that did her duty in protecting the school for over 900 years. The chamber became flooded somewhat when Naruto watched a young man calling himself Tom Riddle, later Lord Voldemort, and forced Kendra to attack the kids within the castle to show bloodline purity and supremacy. Kendra was angry that a descendant of her caretaker would indulge in this madness, using a spell that targeted her mind to make her more obedient as she only thought of killing and ripping things. Naruto ached inside at seeing Kendra forced to do things that she did not want to do, that were not okay in her father's eyes, it made him think of his situation, that his supposed family member, the godfather, had conspired with the toads to change Naruto into Konoha's attack dog to show the leaf's superiority, as well as Jiraiya's and the toad's greatness, just like Voldemort did in making Kendra a monster while promoting his superiority. All that changed when 50 years later, Naruto saw a 12-year-old boy with black hair, green eyes behind round glasses, and a distinctive lightning bolt scar on his forehead, running into the chamber to save an unconscious girl, Naruto watched in awe as the one called Harry Potter faced Kendra and the ghost of Tom Riddle with nothing but Godric's magic sword and a red bird that was immune to Kendra's eyes, a stab in the mouth was all it took to release Kendra from her tormented slavery. But then, Naruto noticed that the memory continued even after Kendra's end as he saw Harry climb down the statue's head and slowly walk to the girl's body, letting the bloodied sword fall to the ground while he secretly held one of Kendra's fangs in his left hand, the young wizard pulls out a black book that was in the girl's arms, and proceeds to stab the thing to death causing black ink blood to spill on the floor as the ghost of Voldemort was sent to the Shinigami's realm. Suddenly, the memory disappeared, leaving only a rising Harry Potter to turn and stare directly at Naruto Uzumaki, I honestly did not expect to see you this soon, but I am in the presence of the most unpredictable ninja in the world. Naruto gawked at this before slowly pointing at the older boy wizard, how do you know who I am Harry Potter? And how are you here? Well, when you become the bloody master of death, you find yourself in all sorts of things that defy logic. Meaning that I am now part of the gods that govern our separate realms, I even still have my saving people's thing which is sometimes such a pain, however, when your dad summoned death to seal the biju, I saw an opportunity, and answer the call because of my bloody title, also it's my way of apologizing to Kendra for stabbing her through her head back then, Harry simply shrugged as if this was his normality. Naruto's mind whirled at what Harry had just said at being there when his dad sealed Kurama and Kendra inside him, you were the Shinigami. Harry used his wand to change his shape to look like the purple-skinned demon with razor-sharp teeth before giving a dramatic bow, 
He then changed back to his regular human form to laugh at Naruto's bewilderment. Ah, it never gets old being a marauder, a master prankster, Harry commented to himself. Well, thank you, Harry Sama, without you, I would never have met Karama and Kendra Chan. Also having cool abilities like talking to snakes and sticking it to my toad of a godfather that my destiny is beyond his control also helps, Naruto bowed respectfully. Please, call me Harry, none of that Sama nonsense, plus I needed a way to put those amphibians in their place, Merlin, I also had to deal with an ugly toad in my lifetime, except she was a woman tried to hide her ugliness by being a cat person and wearing pink, ugh, just thinking of her makes my hand ache, Harry flexes his left hand after the shudder. Well, thanks again, Harry, um, would it, be okay, if I called you Nissan? You act like an older brother who protected me by giving me Kendra to work with Karama, plus now we have the same colored eyes, only yours looks normal than mine, Harry chuckled at Naruto's comparison, he forgot that he could turn his eyes when in Shinigami mode, but having a little brother like Naruto would be a treat since he had no good relatives growing up in London. Harry walks up to Naruto and gives him a warm hug that he really needed, Naruto hugs him back at having another member to the family, Naruto and Harry pull back from each other when Naruto asks a random question. Harry Nissan? What happened to that red-haired girl you saved back in the chamber? Harry let his eyes wander across Limbo a bit before answering, Ginny lived, and years later after I defeated the Dark Lord that tried to kill me as a baby, we married and had children of our own, after our mortal lives expired, she still sticks with me, even when she is confined to cabin in the afterlife as I do my duties as the master of bloody death, why? Naruto blushed in embarrassment but gave an honest answer to his brother, because I want to know if I have a chance at finding love like you did, do you think there is someone out there who for me who will like me and my unique looks? Harry chuckled at Naruto was still a child, he would probably figure it out once he graduates from Ninja Academy, little brother, I know that there is someone out there for you, in fact you may have more than one that likes you for your eyes and for who you really are, it's your choice when it happens, I think your Habiheim could be one of them, trust me, but for now, your magical bond with Kendra has finished and soon you will wake up again, see you later, Naruto, and good luck. Harry vanished as a bright light filled the space around Naruto, he woke up back in Ryuchi cave with Kendra lying on his lap, he slowly rose up as Kendra had tears coming from her now reddish yellow eyes. Naruto. You had me worried, little storm, after waiting for you for more than an hour, I thought my venom may have killed you. It's alright, Kendra Chan. I got to see what you went through by putting up with that riddle Baka, so, did it work? Naruto asked as he and the little basilisk looked at where she had bit him. The bite mark had changed, forming into a turquoise basilisk tattoo coiled around his arm from his wrist to his shoulder, the head of the basilisk tattoo had an open mouth with a narrow golden eye with a red uzumaki spiral swirling inside the eye. Naruto now had his own summoning tattoo to legitimize his connection with the snakes than just having his name signed in the summoning contract with Anko and Orochimaru. Awesome, Datbeo. Now Manda and the others can remove that pedo sage's connection with them, so what are my new powers that my eyes can do? Other than killing anyone on sight or petrifying them, asked Naruto. Kendra smirked as she told him, while also remembering another ability a basilisk can have, other than that, your basilisk eyes have the ability to see heat signatures, or infrared vision, as well as see in the dark, nothing can hide within the shadows of your gaze. Oh, I just remembered. You also have my feature of creating poison breath that can cause any living thing in the proximity to wither and die. When Naruto heard that, he mumbled a bit remembering times when the Ichiraku duo told Naruto that he had to watch his bad breath after eating so much of their ramen, does this mean I should wear a face mask most of the time? Six years have passed since Naruto's accident, yet no one in the academy had a clue on what had become of the orphan blonde, except one Hanada Hayuga who had witnessed the mob attack that took his eyes and voice, she hoped she would get a chance to see him again and thank him for rescuing her when Kumo almost abducted her. Mizuki Sensei was arrested when he tried to steal the forbidden scroll of ceilings from the Hokage's vault. Leaving only Iruka to test these brats, half of which were Uchiha fangirls after the now rogue Anbu Itachi had killed his clan, only Sasuke was spared Itachi's slaughter, turning the boy into a bloodthirsty avenger, not that the fangirls cared, they were only hoping to catch the last Uchiha's eye and be chosen as a future bearer of the Uchiha legacy and fortune, cough, civilian council, cough. After using his signature big head jutsu to shut them up, Iruka announced the start of the graduation exam as well as the incoming student that was coming to take the exam as well. When asked who this latecomer was, the doors opened and an orange blindfold wearing Naruto entered the classroom. The 12 year old Uzumaki now sported a sleeveless black mesh shirt under a green trench coat with silver snakes decorating it. 
baggy black pants with orange stripes on the sides, black sandals on his feet, and a signature green scarf wrapped around his neck to hide his neck scar. A blue snake with a white underbelly and red eyeshadow was wrapped around Naruto's scarf as she guided Naruto to the open seat next to Hinata. This was Ichiki, a n Ichiki Shimahime, in her snake form, not wanting Kendra to cause a panic should the human children do something foolish to their summoner. Greetings, Sensei, I hope my summoner are not too late when we arrived, said Ichiki. Not at all, in fact I was just about to explain why Naruto wasn't in the academy when the rest of the class started, class. This is Naruto Uzumaki, due to an accident that damaged his eyes and voice, Naruto has been in the care of one of Konoha's legendary summons since he his previous residence was condemned, but I am sure he has been taught well under your care Habi-sama, Aruka-sensei complimented to Ichiki. Ichiki brought her tail to her snout and playfully giggled at that, oh, you flatterer, our new upcoming protege's been a godsend to us, it's nice to be a recognized summoning contract again in Konoha, now that we ended our contract with that bleached scientist, the class not knowing who she was talking about except Aruka. The brooding Sasuke decided to make himself known more as he walked up to Naruto and staring him in the face, hey loser, give me your summoning contract and your jutsu, they would be better used by an elite like me, a clanless orphan is not worthy of having such powerful summons. Naruto hissed in anger at that insult, but Ichiki ignored the jab and hissed back at Naruto, much to the confusion of the other students. Sasuke scowled at being ignored and grabbed Naruto by the scarf to put the freak in his place. What's wrong? Can't talk. If you don't give me what I want, then I will have the council seize all your possessions and give them to the last member of the mighty Uchiha clan. Yeah. Sasuke-kun deserves it. Sakura shrieked along with the other fangirls. B but Sasuke-san. Why you are not the last M member of your clan, and the C civilian council has no right to saint step into shinobi affairs, right Aruka-sensei? Hanada stuttered, trying to defend Naruto. Shut up, Hayuga Hor. You are a disgrace to your clan by thinking you can use your dojutsu in other ways than just to attack your enemies, and don't even think of mentioning that traitor in front of me. Sasuke jabbed back, about to slap the Hayuga heiress away when his hand was caught by Naruto in a strong grip. That's enough, Sasuke. Hanada is correct that the civilian council does not have the authority it once had, the third Hokage made it so that the civilians no longer had say in shinobi and clan affairs, Naruto is from a clan, the Uzumaki clan, therefore you cannot demand to take any of his clan's secrets, Aruka rebuked Sasuke. Then how come we never heard of the Uzumaki clan during our history lessons, Aruka sensei? Asked Kiba Inazuka, only for the lazy Nara in the class to answer that. Troublesome. The council felt that the Uchiha and Senju were more important since they founded the village, however. The first Hokage had helped founding Konoha when he married a member of the Uzumaki clan, their sealing jutsus made them a force to be reckoned with, their spiral symbol can be found on our village mark to signify our shared alliance with them, before the clan and their country were ransacked and scattered during the second ninja war. Everyone stood silent while Sasuke simply huffed arrogantly and sat back down in his seat and went back to daydreaming on how to kill Itachi, thinking that Naruto's clan was still not as great as the Uchiha clan, Sakura, Ino, and the other fangirls squealed at seeing his cool behavior, oh bother. Now back to the task at hand, it's time for the genin graduation exam to begin, to start, you all need to complete this written test, after that you all must perform a henge, substitution, and finally the clone jutsu, good luck to all of you, Aruka wished his students after passing out the papers to each row. Hanada worried that Naruto couldn't see the paper and was about to help him when he picked up his pencil and began writing down on the test, Hanada got curious and used her Byakugan to peek at what was under his blindfold, when she saw the green slit eyes she bristled in fright at her Naruto-kun no longer having his blue eyes, Ichiki silently brought her back before she could look further and cause herself major damage to her life. Curious, aren't we? Be thankful I pulled you out before you could get yourself killed, Naruto has been given a special gift that is rarely given to humans, whispered Ichiki to Hanada. What d did you do to Naruto-kun? Hanada whispered angrily at the snake while Aruka wasn't looking. We did nothing to him, it is what your village did that made him this way, why, does his new features offend you? whispered Ichiki. Naruto-kun's eyes were and never like that, change them back to the kind sky blue that they were, she demanded quietly to the snake. I can't, and even if my clan or I could, it wouldn't work, the change is permanent, does this mean that this is not the same Naruto that saved you from that Kumo abduction? The quiet words from the summon shocked the young Hayuga heiress, not knowing what to say, she returned to work on her paper while Naruto silently sighed, having heard what Hanada said at thinking his new eyes were not to her liking. Thirty minutes later, 
Aruka called time and picked up everyone's papers, he then roll called the students in alphabetical order to perform the three jutsus and earn their Konoha plate headband, since I don't want to take too much of everyone's time, I am just going to talk about Naruto's and be done with it. When Naruto's name was called, he walked up to the center of the room and turned into a perfect copy of Anko Mitarashi giving a sexy pose, causing blood to drip from Aruka sensei's nose. Impressive, and not bad looking, and it looks just like Anko, hum hum, next the substitution, Naruto, still under his Anko henge, went up in a puff of smoke when the real Anko was eating a stick of dango until she looked around to see where she was and grabbed Aruka by his shirt. Aruka. You better have a good explanation on how I got pulled from my dango break. Or ill have my snakes put something in your coffee. Aruka knew now that this was the real Anko. Calm down Anko-san. Naruto just pulled a long distance substitution while still under a henge that looked just like you, a good quality of a ninja to pull a switch that fast while still disguised, Anko's eyes widened that her little blondie pulled a fast one on her. Oh, just you wait, Gaki. I am coming for you, once I get you as my future student. Ill. That was as far as Anko got before Naruto reappeared back in the classroom in his true form. Now, Naruto, perform the clone jutsu and you will be a certified genin of the leaf village, Aruka looking relieved that Anko did not get to finish her rant and scare the rest of the students that had finished their exam. Naruto just stood there for a few seconds, until Aruka looked confused, is something wrong? Naruto shook his head before speaking in a hissing voice that made some of the classmates shiver at the supposed monster their parents told them to avoid, Ichiki woke up from her little nap on his scarf and went to explain things for Aruka. Naruto-kun can't speak the normal way he used to, thankfully, we snake summons can understand and translate for him, until our scouts can get a message to the slug summons at Shikatsu Forest. Their summoner can fix his voice so he can speak to both his human companions and still speak our noble tongue. Aruka now understands why Naruto made those sounds, hopefully Tsunade Senju can help the boy. He said that because he has so much chakra in his body, he wondered if it was okay to use another form of clone jutsu that is more advanced that can work with Naruto's chakra reserves. Aruka's eyes widened at this new information, and smiled before nodding his head to the young boy. I don't see why not, a clone is a clone. Plus there are many forms of the clone jutsu used throughout the other hidden villages that using an alternative form should nt make a difference, so long as it can be done, show me what you can do, Naruto. Naruto smiled before making a cross hand sign with his fingers and did the shadow clone jutsu, making sure to limit it down to 10 without freaking the rest of the class on how many more he could create, the shocked sensei regained his bearings and inspected the clones that Naruto had made before giving his final verdict. Amazing. The shadow clone jutsu is not an easy jutsu to master, but considering your condition Naruto, it suits you just fine, congratulations. You have passed the genin exams, Naruto. Aruka proudly declared and was about to hand Naruto his headband when Naruto raised his hand to stop him. Although my summoner is happy that he passed Aruka sensei, Naruto wishes to wear a headband that was once worn by his late mother, the third Hokage had given him a memento of his Uzumaki mother in order to remember her by and show that he would become a great ninja when he passed the tests, Ichiki then went under Naruto's scarf and pulled out a refurbished Uzumaki headband plate attached to a red ribbon, as red as an Uzumaki's red hair. Aruka frowned, knowing that Naruto may still have some mixed feelings on wearing the symbol of the village that tormented his early life, but he accepted Naruto that he was not the Kayubi that he kept sealed in his body, Aruka smiled and allowed Naruto to use Kashina's home headband. Naruto pulled off his orange blindfold, while keeping his eyes closed so no one could see, and replaced it with his newly designated eye cover that now showed that Naruto was a ninja for his village, and for his family, he had help from the snakes in creating a seal that allowed Naruto to see through the metal plate while continue using his eyes' unique abilities. After grading the written tests and letting class exit the classroom, Aruka watched as Naruto and the rest of his students that graduated leave to come back next week for team placements, Aruka hoped that for Naruto's sake and for Konoha as a whole, they move past their misgivings for the young Uzumaki and see him for the good person and hero he really is. Scene change one week later Team 7, led by Kakashi Hitaki will be, Sakura Haruna, Sasuke Uchiha, and Amy, Aruka announces to the class, Sasuke simply huffs while Sakura and Amy are having a stare off who is the better Kunoichi on the team. Team 8, led by Kurenai Yuhi will be, Kiba Inazuka, Hanada Hayuga, and Shino Abarame. Kiba and his puppy companion howl in joy as they are now sticking with Hanada. Hanada was silent as Shino when their female Kunoichi Junin leader had them leave the classroom. After the newly formed Team 8 left, Aruka was about to announce Team 9 when something crashed through the window and landed in front of Sensei's desk, 
The smoke cleared to show a promoted Junan Anko in all her sexy glory with a banner that said, The incredible sexy and not so single anymore, Anko Mitarashi. Alright, where is my brat? It's time to begin Anko bootcamp, announced Anko. Naruto simply smiled and had a scoreboard within 7, 9 score. Anko stumbled at seeing that, having a depressing cloud overhead which she shook off and glared at her student. I worked really hard on that intro. How could it have been better? Anko san, you're early. I was just about to announce your team 9 consisting so far only Naruto Uzumaki, said Iruka sensei. Not now, Iruka. Answer me, Naruto. Which to the surprise of everyone, Naruto did answer. His fuenjutsu has been improving that he now wears a paper seal on his neck which acts like a speaker, still waiting for the slug sage to answer her summons and fix Naruto's voice if possible. Your intro could have been better if you had summoned a giant snake in front of the rest of the class, and then doing a cool sexy pose, his voice sounded like a recording, but still loud enough to be heard, even from under his scarf. However, Sasuke picked the time now to throw a fit that a sensei gets to only teach the loser, and not him, I am an elite. I demand you train me instead of the loser, wench. His reply was Anko throwing a kanai that scraped Sasuke's cheek and her appearing behind in a headlock. Listen well. Monkey see monkey do. You already have a sensei that knows how to get you to activate your eye powers, I don't, so I am teaching Naruto, so why don't you be a good boy and sit your quacking butt down? Anko then appeared next to Naruto and body flickered away in a swirl of fire, her banner going up in a puff of smoke and vanishing leaving Aruka to continue announcing the other teams while Team 7 waited for their sensei to show up. Scene change, Forest of Death Tower, Anko's home. Anko and Naruto were now in her bedroom where she tackled him with a hug as they fell onto Anko's bed, hooray, Naruto-kun. We are now an official team. Naruto's face was blushing at the closeness Anko was giving him, but he liked it, after hugging her back and staying that way for several minutes, Naruto got up and had Anko let him go so they could talk and learn more about each other as teacher and student, of course. But we are not a full team, Anko, we need two more ninjas to complete our team so I can pass the Chunin exams, those old councilmen are not going to make it easy for the both of us, even with Gigi's help, do you know of anyone that could be a potential addition to Team 9? asked Naruto. Hum, I may know one Kunoichi in mind that my friend Kuranai tried to teach but had chickened out, well head to the Kurama clan's compound tomorrow to see if she is a good candidate. Hear that, Kurama. There's a ninja clan that has your name too, Naruto mentally commented to the Kyubi, his answer was a snort to being compared to a single clan. But first, we need to introduce ourselves, I rarely got to see you during your stay with the snakes in Ryuchi cave. So I'll go first, my name is Anko Mitarashi, my likes are Naruto-kun. Dango, and the snake summons, my dislikes are a certain white snake. Curse marks, spoiled brats, and egotistical politicians, my skills are in snake jutsu, interrogation, fire ninjutsu, snake taijutsu, and soon sage arts, my dreams are to become a true snake sage like you are also training to be, and to have a big family with you, Naruto-kun, Naruto's lower face was as red as his mom's headband, Anko snickered as she finally got him back twice now, for his genin tests and his not high enough score pranks. Well, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, but we won't tell anyone my father's name until I become a chunin. My likes are Anko Chan, Kendra Chan, Kurama San, the Snake Summons. Ramen, the Ichiraku family, and Hokage Gigi, my dislikes are Uchiha's. Except for Weasel and Makoto before she died, Konoha villagers that see me as the Kyubi and not myself and those who see Anko Chan as a slut and a bad apple like Pito Sage. Toads and the Toad Sage, and hypocrites, my skills are in Fuenjutsu, Kenjutsu, Snake Jutsu, Wind and Water Ninjutsu, and finally Snake and Fox Taijutsu. I still have some ways to go before I can learn sage arts, my dream is to become a worthy sage for the snake summons and Kendra Chan, and have a big family with you Anko Chan and others who like me for who I am, Anko was happy for Naruto's thoughts on her, while somewhat miffed that had get more girls to love him. Ah. Does Naruto think I am not enough women for him to handle? Anko pulled his arm into her bountiful bosom with Naruto thinking quickly on how to explain. And no, Anko Chan. It's just that since I am the last of two clans, I will be required to have more women in our lives, but you are my number one sexy snake, and no one is going to take that spot from you, or take you away from me, his answer had Anko smile in victory at that remark and hugged him again. Thank you. Naruto-kun, it's nice to know that you are one of the few people that see me more than what others see me as, are you still planning on figuring a way to remove my curse mark? She shivers in anticipation of Naruto's answer. Yes, 
Kendra Chan has helped me create a jutsu where I will purify someone with demonic, cursed taint inside them. It's a venom that doesn't poison but purifies the body, but I need to test it on someone before I can be assured that I can remove the curse mark off you without debilitating you in any way. Anko was happy to learn that there was a chance for her to be washed of Orochimaru's taint. Maybe with the rumors of the Kurama clan heiress having demonic taint in her, they can know for certain if the jutsu works or not. Well, in celebration of our newly formed Team 9, we are going to have a date together. Anko smiled before going into her wardrobe to see what outfit Naruto would enjoy the most. Naruto simply stayed on Anko's bed and smiled that life was going to get better. He just hoped that his cousin, Tsunade, will come and try fixing what the villagers broke. He still loved speaking parcel tongue, but he missed using his other native tongue. Scene change. Some hotel room lady Tsunade was getting annoyed at these attempts Orochimaru was sending his snakes to send her a message. Only this time, the snakes went to Shizun without her looking. When she read the note, Shizun had her mentor sit on the sofa and try to explain some new developments. Lady Tsunade, the snake summons are no longer contracted with your teammate, Orochimaru. The note explains that they are now the summons of Anko Mitarashi and one Naruto Uzumaki. Tsunade was up and alert when that name was said. What are you talking about, Shizun? Naruto is dead, Jiraiya showed me his burnt body when the ceiling of the Kayubi failed. Tsunade reminded Shizun when she remembered running to Konoha when she heard the Kayubi somehow escaped Kashina. According to this note, Naruto is alive and houses the Kayubi inside of him while also being bonded to a powerful snake, it says that he has been abused and tortured since he was six, until he was kept hidden from Konoha for six years, his eyes have changed, and his vocal cords were badly damaged that he can no longer speak normally, said Shizun. That got Tsunade angry. How dare her toad of a teammate lie to her and make her leave in such a depressed state, leaving her godchild against a pack of wolves, she would beat the answers out of Jiraiya, next time she saw him, but Kashina's son needed help, perhaps now she can get over her fear of blood and make up for her lost time with her godson. Shizun. Pack up. We are heading back to Konoha, Tsunade commanded as the two got work. Naruto and Anko had just finished their morning exercises together after having a wonderful date last night. Now they are walking up to the Kurama clan's compound with a note from the third Hokage giving them permission to enter and try to help their heiress, but Naruto could sense the negative intent from most of the Kurama clan members as they neared the Kurama manor. Halt. We've specific orders to prevent anyone from meeting our heiress, Yukumo Kurama, the guard stated to the two. Anko handed them the Hokage's note to them, the Hokage outranks your orders and has asked us to see if we can help your princess with her, condition, so let us pass. The guards looked over the orders of the Hokage to see if they were legit, they then see the Hirazan Serutobi's seal on the bottom of the paper, nodding in acceptance they allow Anko and her student to enter, one of guards then heads to speak with the elder of the Kurama clan, Unkai Kurama. Naruto and his sensei enter the compound as they walk into the heiress room, they find the room filled with paintings, all drawn and painted by one talented artist, Yukumo Kurama, most of the artwork depicted Konoha landscapes and Yukumo's ex-sensei, Kuranai all of them bleak and showing how morbid and resentful the artist was feeling inside herself. Her current work was showing a Naruto and Anko's looks and expressions in detail when they just entered. However, it also depicts Anko having a white wispy snake with Orochimaru's eye coiled around her in restraint, while Naruto had a wispy green serpent that looked similar to Kendra the basilisk with her crown of horns and glowing gold eyes, the snake was coiled in a protective and comforting embrace around the Uzumaki while also having a red tinge surrounding Naruto with nine fox-like tails behind him. Whistle. Wow princess, you sure know how to paint, you even got my former sensei's eyes right, Anko complimented. The brown-haired princess puts down her brushes and paints as she stares blankly at the duo with her light brown eyes. Why are you here? Have you come to check on my seal that Kuranai sensei made or is the third Hokage getting worried about how potential a threat I may be? She asks. Honestly, we were hoping you would help us try an experiment of sorts, Naruto spoke up. What's wrong with your voice, and why are both your eyes covered? Are you blind? Asked Yukumo, causing Naruto to go to the corner with a depressed cloud drizzling over his head. Oh, don't mind my cute student, he suffered some casualties that scarred his voice box and his eyes. Thankfully, he got a new pair of eyes, but they are quite special that the Hokage made it a clan secret. Naruto is a prodigy when it comes to Fuenjutsu that he created a voice box for himself until the right healer can fix it, he also used sealing on his blindfold so he can still see, while protecting others from looking directly into his eyes, Anko explained to Yukumo while dragging Naruto out of his corner. Oh, I am sorry for being so insensitive, so does this mean you are going to strengthen my seal Kurenai sensei put on me? 
Yukumo spat the name of her former sensei to show how much she loathed her. No, as Naruto kun was about to explain, he has developed a technique that can purify someone with demonic or cursed taints, if our plan works, it can help in removing the black mark that's ostracized you. Just as this curse mark has branded a bad reputation for me and my summons, Anko lifts her collar and shows Yukumo the tattooed seal on the back of her shoulder. Yukumo gasps at this and is curious at how this Kunoichi still pressed forward to become a sensei, however, Yukumo's body was still too weak to keep up with the training that she tried to do in the past, but it also made her wonder if Naruto was also feared by others for his eyes or something. Why would you do this? Why me? She asks looking at Naruto. Because I too know what it's like to be feared for something you personally had no control over. I am hated by most of the village because I have sealed within me a demon with nine tails that is the source of the Konoha's grief. Unfortunately, few people see me as a misunderstood human. When everyone else sees the Kyubi I hold, so that in turn labels me a monster in human skin. But if this jutsu works both you and my sensei can be free, and you can join team 9 to become the next genjutsu specialist that we've heard you wish to master and become a kunoichi, I am making strides by having accepted Kayubi within me and am helping Anko-chan get out of Orochimaru's shadow, will you allow us to help you in getting out of the shadows of your clan and your former sensei that let their fears get the better of them? Naruto offers his hand to Yukumo as she stares and contemplates on what he said. Could she accept these strangers? Could she have a real friend and not just an angry Ido nagging at her thoughts? Is this worth the risk? Yukumo decides to take a leap of faith as she takes Naruto's hand as he engulfs her in a warm heartfelt hug. Yukumo began crying tears of sadness, confusion, and joy at feeling like how her mom and dad took care of her before they died, she accepted Naruto's brotherly affection as she too hugs back with Anko hugging them both before they all split apart. Alright, enough cuddling. We can do that later after you get my hickey off and get this dainty princess up to shape without breaking her bones. Anko's phrasing caused the two youngsters to blush before they all got ready to perform the jutsu. Yukumoheim, if you would please sit in your chair while Anko keeps a hold of you when your inner demon begins fighting the purifying venom, I will first loosen the seal that was placed on you before I administer the cure, we don't want the seal to interfere with the procedure, Naruto explains as he looks at Yukumo's seal which was hidden beneath her hair on the backside of her neck. After loosening the seal, Yukumo holds tight to Anko's arms as Anko is facing the little princess. Naruto goes through several hand signs before his teeth turn into snake fangs as he bites Yukumo lightly on her neck, pumping the non-killing venom that Kendra had given him as he states the jutsu, secret technique, sacred royal venom jutsu. Yukumo squirms as the venom creates white veins to form on her body before it reaches her head as Anko holds her tight with Naruto pulling out his kanai. Yukumo cries in agony before feeling the seal disintegrates, after the seal is destroyed and no trace was left of it, a shadowy substance surrounds Yukumo before leaping out of her body as it takes the form of a demonic looking Yukumo with sharp teeth, brown skin, and long horizontal horns as it gazed at Naruto angrily for removing itself from its host. How dare you! I was the only one keeping her alive while her uncle and clan plotted to assassinate her for killing her parents when her powers overreacted from her bottled up emotions that exploded on that day the clan compound burst into flames, I will kill you, brat! Ito then charges at Naruto. Naruto decides to let Kurama put this demon in its place, Naruto allows the Biju's red chakra to swirl around him and the face of the Kyubi takes shape above Naruto as his nine wispy tails flapped behind him, Ito was shaking in fear at now understanding that this boy was the Jinchuriki to the most powerful of the nine Biju. You think yourself a powerful demon? Pathetic. Kurama roars at Ito who is now groveling to the floor, at the mercy of the Kyubi and Naruto before her. However, Yukumo stops the Kyubi and Naruto from eradicating Ito on the spot as she has Ito look her in the eyes, they stare at one another for a moment until Yukumo decides to say a few words. You may have protected me from my uncle and clan, but you refused to let others help me like Naruto Ani and Anko Onesen have done, sorry, but I don't need you anymore, Yujumo then jabs Naruto's kanai she swiped from him and jabbed it into Ito's temple. I was, useful to you. Ito's final words before her face cracked to show a malevolent black and purple chakra face with red eyes before it wailed and vanished from the mortal realm, no longer able to haunt Yukumo ever again. The Kurama princess strength finally gave away as her weak body collapsed to the ground, but thankfully Anko and Naruto were there to catch her as they smiled at her while carrying her out of the compound, Naruto summoned a shadow clone to seal away Yukumo's art supplies and her stored kunoichi gear she kept so that they could move her stuff to Naruto's place but Unkai and the Kurama clan had a surprise waiting for them outside. 
Naruto had Anko piggyback Yukumo when he sensed the increase of negative intent outside as he gave a hidden signal to let him prepare for an ambush, when they exited the compound, Anko quirked an eyebrow as Naruto-kun was right with Unkai surrounding them, things were about to get interesting. Unkai Karama, what is this? The third Hokage gave permission for us to. This is no longer Konoha's affair. This is a private clan affair that the Hokage has no jurisdiction over. We shall eliminate our clan's stain that has been among us for far too long. Yakumo's uncle proclaimed with Yakumo shrinking behind Anko's back. That wasn't her fault. Her Edo demon is gone. My student's experiment jutsu worked. Also, she is your heiress to your clan, Unkai. Would you dishonor the memory of your brother and sister by killing your niece? The one niece that can bring the Karama clan back to glory? Anko retorted back to the clan head. I do this for the good of my clan. If I must sacrifice the last remnant of my family in order for my clan to survive, then I shall. I can make a new clan heir or heiress by arranging a marriage with myself and that failure of a teacher, but an excellent genjutsu mistress, making Anko grit her teeth that Yukumo had to die in her uncle's eyes while Kurinai would be made into the Kurama clan's breeding mare. Yukumo had mixed feelings about Kurinai, but she didn't want her to be made into the clan's breeding stock. Naruto was not amused, so he decided now was the time to put take the cover off. Anko chan, Yukumo Imaudo, don't interfere, ill handle this, whatever happens, don't look. Naru kun, are you sure? asked Anko. Naruto simply nodded his head as he stepped forward as Unkai and his loyal followers prepared to blast the Jinchuriki with a fire jutsu before trapping him in a powerful genjutsu so they could target Anko who was protecting Yukumo back inside the Kurama compound. Naruto simply dodged the fireball jutsus aimed all around him, but one of them destroyed his voice box seal and just when Unkai prepped his strongest genjutsu with the clan charging forward to immobilize the demon brat before going after their former heiress, Naruto removed his mother's headband and opened his yellow basilisk eyes. Scene change, Hokage Tower what happened? Serutobi asked again, feeling another headache from paperwork in the council meeting that will be making a fuss of this. Naruto hisses his answers with Ichiki being his interpreter again, Yukumo is standing with a walking stick with Anko there to support her in the Hokage's office. The cleansing jutsu was a success, with Yukumo Kurama now making a slow recovery that her bones and muscles are now getting stronger day by day. Perhaps with a more expert healer she could be fit to join Team 9 once she is ready. However, the Kurama clan head led the rest of the clan to kill us and later arrange a meeting with the council to have Kuranai breed the next line of the Kurama clan. I had to reveal my dojutsu to put an end the present and future threats, Unkai and all the Kurama clan are dead except Yukumo whom I wish to take under the protection of the Uzumaki clan until Yukumo finds a worthy man to bring back the Kurama clan, but during the massacre under my deathly gaze that made me immune to their genjutsu, I found a masked shinobi petrified by my eyes, his blank mask protected him from taking the full brunt of my powerful dojutsu. Naruto summons a giant snake that had imprisoned the petrified root agent in its coils, the blank mask from Danzo's supposedly terminated organization the third Hokage clearly recognized, had hoped his old friend would not go behind his back, but he knew that the old warhawk was stuck in his ways, still trying to get Naruto to become an emotionless weapon for Konoha. I see, that shinobi is from a disbanded group created by Danzo to protect Konoha from the shadows, however, the more death counts for the success of their missions made me decide that the root program could not protect Konoha or the will of fire but put more gas on the flames of hatred by creating more enemies and decreasing our numbers, Hiruzen explained to them. Why can't that old buzzard just leave things well enough alone? Anko sighed at this. Don't worry, since you only petrified the root agent, we now have a living witness that can be unpetrified with the help of our returned healer and her apprentice. The third Hokage has them turn to the door as two women enter the office. Anko is shocked to see the famed slug sage returned with Shizun and Tonton there as well. Naruto and Yukumo did not understand, which is why the last member of the Kurama clan spoke up. Excuse me, but who are you two? I am Tsunade Senju, this is my apprentice Shizun and our pig friend is Tonton. We are the best medical nin in Konoha and the entire elemental nations. I can have Shizun work with you, Yukumo-chan, and as the last member of the Senju clan and the head of it. I agree with Naruto Uzumaki in taking custody of Eris if the Kurama clan until she is of age to pick her man she wishes to be with, Tsunade puts in her two cents for Yukumo to have Naruto and Anko take care of her. After having Serutobi sensei explain to her when she arrived on what has happened to her godson, she was lied about being dead by her perverted team member who still hadn't returned from his spy network. Ichiki hisses when Tsunade gets too close to Naruto. Be at ease, snake summon, 
I merely want to get to know my godson who Jiraiya lied to me by saying he had died when he was a baby. I mean to make it up to him by healing his vocal cords so he can speak normally as well as keep using his snake language that makes him special for your summons. I also want to get to know him better and maybe even be accepted as part of his precious people, with Shizun and Tantan also joining. Will you give me the chance, Naruto? She asks solemnly. Naruto is still as a statue when she asks that question, having to swallow all that she said to know that she truly cares for him but was tricked by the stupid toads and his so called godfather. The answer came when he surprisingly hugs Tsunade, his head underneath her big healthy bosom as he nods fervently while letting his tears stain his headband, blindfold, and Tsunade's kimono. Tsunade hugs back, letting her love envelop the godson she was forced to abandon unknowingly, but now things would be different, for the son of her cousin Kashina. Hey now. Where's my hug, fiancé? You still have to get this hickey off me to mark me properly as part of your family, Naruto-kun. Anko jealously staring at Naruto hugging Lady Tsunade. Hold on. What do you mean fiancé? Sensei, did you neglect to tell me my godson is engaged? Tsunade stares grimly at Serutobi who hid his face under his hat. Naruto hisses to ease the situation with the cheeky giggling at the drama present, Naruto-kun will explain it to you, granny but first he wishes to have a successful operation to speak clearly about the Uzumaki and Namikaze clan's restoration, after that he plans to use the sacred royal venom jutsu to remove Orochimaru's curse mark on Anko-chan. Tsunade is irked by her godson's nickname of her, but she wants to hear him speak again, while also finish looking after her patient she picked up while passing in sea country after dealing with a mad scientist that Orochimaru abandoned, Ichiki however wishes to say something before they all leave the Hokage's office. Ichiki slithers to the floor as she uses her tail to summon a gift Kendra-sama and the snake summons help create for their prodigy. Naruto-kun, Kendra-sama and the snake summons have one more thing to give you. This was fashioned from the queen's outgrown fangs and chakra metal, with a sheath made from the wood of a kodama, a, and spirit tree snake, tree. This will now serve as your sign as the heir to the snake summons, soon you'll become the king of snakes, but after you pass the sage trials and have completed your training, his name is the Orochi Kodama, the great snake hidden in the trees, he will be your tool and protector while Anko shall earn the Kusanagi after she surpasses Orochimaru. Naruto fingers his new katana from Kendra in the snake summons, it looks like a regular katana with a green wrapped handle, but the round guard is a coiled silver snake with topaz eyes and its head touching the base of the sword on both sides, the sheath having been polished green by basilisk venom. Thank you for the gift, Ichiki-chan, tell Kendra-chan I love the gift you and the summons made for me, but how is she doing? Is Manda still trying to show he is a worthy mate for her, or is he still competing with Garaga to show who is the best great snake to slither by the queen of all serpent kind? Naruto hisses privately to Ichiki. Ichiki giggles before answering, unfortunately, Manda is still trying to prove that he is top snake next to the white snake sage and Kendra-sama, it's quite entertaining to watch Kendra-sama egging Garaga to try to accept you Naruto-kun and Anko-chan, to show not all humans are bad and betray us like his previous summon did while also brushing Manda off by having Garaga fight Manda in a stalemate as she referees the two. Naruto laughed at this before dismissing his prankster snake friend while having Tsunade lead him to the hospital wing, where Shizun already had taken Yakumo there to take care of her along with Shizun's and Tsunade's other patient, Isaribi. Isaribi talked with Yakumo as Shizun got her settled in and the two became friends, Yakumo discussed her lover for genjutsu and art while Isaribi with her black eyes and violet hair showing more life after having been taken in by the slug sage and her apprentice, shared her love for swimming and water jutsus, Anko was eyeing the new girl and smiled as an idea popped in her head. When Naruto walked by, Isaribi stopped talking with Yakumo to stare at Naruto's mysterious hidden face, Anko surprised Naruto by taking his blindfold off to show the girls his eyes, Naruto quickly puts on his protective lenses so now his eyes appear to be green while being safe for everyone to look at him. Tsunade was startled at seeing eyes like her slithering ex-teammate, but these held more warmth and power that Orochimaru never held in his, Yukumo was surprised to see what Naruto's eyes looked like, although wondering why they are not gold like the ones she painted, Isaribi was in awe at the beautiful green eyes that seemed to sparkle to her that she couldn't help but whisper in admiration. Pretty, Naruto was surprised that another girl liked his eyes and blushed, he hid his face while having his right hand try to grab his blindfold from Anko's high reach. Why are his eyes like that? Aren't they a different color? asked Yukumo. Oh, my cute student has been gifted with special eyes from a queen snake that the snake summons revere, they are so powerful that they can kill a man on sight if they look directly into them, however, Naruto was given special snake eye lenses that help him when he doesn't want to use his powers, 
The lenses are the color of his former blue eyes which combined with the shining yellow makes the pretty green that you did just see, Anko explains. Then why does he wear a blindfold? Asked Isaribi. He's very shy and doesn't want to be labeled a bigger freak more than he already is. Isaribi understands and decides to show Naruto her other form, she taps on his shoulder before she shyly shows the results of her experiments which gives her green fish-like scales around her body, and her hair replaced by a webbed frill crest adorned her head, Naruto is speechless at seeing this girl being different like he, Anko, and Yukumo. I understand what it's like to be different, but I am coming to terms that now it is a part of me, with Tsunade-sama's help and Shizune senpei I will soon be able to change at will without feeling so much pain. What do you think? She asks Naruto who is quiet before answering with a hiss. Isaribi is confused until Anko butts in, it means he thinks you look great fish sticks, hey, since you're looking to practice and master your water style and your created bloodline, do you wish to join team 9 with me, Oni Pastel, and Mr. Snake King? It will make us a full team and you get to spend more time with your new friends, your awesome strong sexy sensei, and my hubby, Anko goaded while Naruto was rolling his snake eyes. Yukumo blushed as she thought of getting closer to Naruto, Tsunade smiled at knowing what Anko was thinking of doing, which would work, with her being able to keep an eye on her godson while also making sure Anko does not go crazy with her harem scheme. Shizune was happy for these misfits in finding each other and will work together to become stronger for one another. Scene changed somewhere in rice country. A mole-faced man with a kabuki outfit and having a long white mane of hair was peeking into a bathhouse for his Icha Icha research, taking a short break from his spy network after learning that Orochimaru and the Akatsuki were soon making their move once the Chunin exams start in Konoha in the future. Yep. This was the infamous toad sage Jiraiya. He was interrupted from his snooping when a puff of smoke blocked his view and Fugasaku, the elder toad of Mount, Mayoboku, stood atop his head, the short toad with hair slapped Jiraiya down to the ground, startling the men and women in the bathhouse, Jiraiya quickly hid himself in a makeshift bush before speaking to his contracted summon. Fuga sensei What are you doing here? I was almost at the best part of my research, Jiraiya spoke with a hint of anger at not seeing the goodies. Save your smut writing for later, Jiraiya boy, something's happened at Mount, Mayoboku, Jeritora hasn't been seen on years and we still haven't found a trace of him, also the prophecy has changed, Fugasaku explained to their disciple and summoner. Jiraiya was now on high alert at hearing this, how could it have changed? Naruto is still in Konoha with Hiruzen Sensei, he should be ready to learn from the gallant Jiraiya when I return to give Sensei my reports on Orochimaru and the Akatsuki. Have you checked your mail, Jiraiya boy? Fugasaku slaps his webbed hand as a huge pile of scrolls the size of Jiraiya fumbles into the world with the most recent letter in the Toad Elder's hands. A, I kinda lost track, but I am pretty sure Naruto is fine under Konoha's protection, being a part of Kakashi's team, Jiraiya waves off. According to this, Jiraiya boy, young Naruto has been hurt and scarred by the villagers, and this appears to not be the only time it seems the people Minato love to show their love by trying to kill the secret son of the Hokage and this was more than six years ago. What if the child of prophecy is too weak to fulfill his destiny that he takes another route? Jiraiya becomes stiff when hearing this that he reads how the godson he neglected might not be able to see or speak to learn from him. How can he teach a boy that has become blind and mute because Konoha wanted their fresh pounds of meat on the Kayubi? Jiraiya now is in panic as he rushes to Konoha's direction and hopes that it is not too late, that the toad's prophecy can still happen not realizing that he is about to open a large can of worms that he worked really hard to hide and keep shut for so long. Naruto is happy, it's been six weeks since Tsunade fixed his vocal cords, Anko is now curse mark free, and she has been preparing the full shinobi squad of team 9 to compete in the chunin exams in the coming days, he enjoyed spending time with his little adopted sister Yukumo and new girlfriend Isaribi, although he made sure to go on dates with Anko so she wouldn't feel left out and so she could have her personal Naruto time but nothing too extreme until becoming a chunin. However, there were some problems with Team 9 being considered a legitimate squad by some of the other Konoha shinobi. Mainly Kuranai, who still thought Yukumo was not fit to be a shinobi from her past experiences with the Kurama heiress, that led Anko having to fight her old friend to defend her student that she came to think of as her little sister, now the snake mistress was barely speaking to the genjutsu mistress until Kuranai apologizes to Yukumo and the rest of Team 9 for her disrespect, still hasn't happened yet. Anyway, Naruto has gotten better with his jutsus, one of his father's signature jutsus. Sealing arts, experimenting with Kendra's familiar connection. Team synchronizing, and wielding his katana that Kendra and the snake summons had gifted him with Enko's other good friend Yugo to help him in kenjutsu. 
Creating over a hundred shadow clones can really boost your ninja training. Which is why he also taught it to Isoribi and Yakumo. Although the two couldn't pull off as many as the Uzumaki can. Once his team completes the Chunin exams, he will finally get his Uzumaki, Namikaze inheritance and live in his parents' compound that still is locked and sealed up, don't get him wrong, living with Anko, Isoribi, and Yakumo in the Tower of the Forest of Death has its ups and downs, but Naruto is eager to have him and his loved ones live somewhere that is more safe than accidentally wandering into a forest filled with giant animals and insects that can eat a genin or some distracted chunin. Now Naruto, his team, and Granny Tsunade are eating at Ichiraku Ramen with Naruto having his special Naruto bowl, he had just finished his second bowl when Yugo Sensei appeared behind them with her Anbu cat mask on, official Hokage or council business. Naruto-san, the council requests your presence in the council room, said Anko. Is there something wrong? asks Naruto, I cannot say, only that they request your presence. Hold on, I may be the only living member of the Senju clan, but I was not informed that the council was meeting today, who's leading this council? It certainly isn't Serutobi sensei, Tsunade pointed out. I was told by the council elders to request Naruto-san, Yugo knew that Tsunade was not letting her godson go in unprepared. Those old buzzards, fine. Naruto let's finish our meal and head up to Hokage Tower, Anko, take Yukumo and Isoribi to your place until we come back, I don't want Danzo to try anything funny while we're there, Tsunade then quickly finished her sake as Naruto handed his last bowl to Ayame and then put his eye cover back on. He only shows his eyes to those who are precious to him and accept his new look, but also to scare those who really tick him off with his negative sensory, just not to the point of letting his basilisk stare petrify or kill them, unless necessary. He does not fully rely on his eyes to do the fighting for him like one certain Uchiha who got lucky in unlocking his Sharingan during Team 7's mission in Wave. Do you think I should have my eyes ready, safety off, during the meeting? Naruto asks his Biju tenant and Dikendra through his familiar bond. Yes, I wouldn't put it past that Warhawk to try something, especially since the last time you got close to him, I felt the strange presence of the Sharingan under his bandaged eye and covered arm, says Kurama. Agreed, he may think he has the higher ground. But that decrepit old fool is nothing like a phoenix, his talons will not ensnare us, Kendra vehemently imputed. Naruto silently nodded as he and Tsunade followed Yugo to the Hokage Tower while Tsunade quietly had Nako to inform the third Hokage on what the council was doing behind his back. Scene change What is the meaning of this? I go to talk with my student who's returned from his spy network when in fact I was speaking to a shadow clone, Jiraiya. You'd go behind your sensei's back along with the rest of council. What is this world coming to? Hiruzen shakes his head in disappointment before going to take his seat in the council meeting room where they were about to address Naruto and the Kyubi's seal with Jiraiya looking like he was caught peeking at the bathhouse. Hokage-sama, we have been informed that the Jinchuriki may not have his seal properly on, for destroying most of the Kurama clan we fear that the Kyubi may have had a hand in influencing the boy in doing destroying a clan that was a part of Konoha as a whole, thankfully, Jiraiya had returned from his spy network to see the current status of the Kyubi's seal informed Homura with the council agreeing with her. I have already excused Naruto for what had occurred with Unkai and his ilk, for the clan head was attacking Team 9 when they were on a mission which successfully removed the curse of the Kurama clan, the boy did not use the Kyubi's chakra while he defended himself and his team, the third Hokage explained to them. Still sensei, I need to check the seal in case the Kyubi made a crack in its cage, I am sorry for not meeting you in person. But I had to make certain my godson was all right after reading the letters you sent me," said Jiraiya. HMPH, some godfather you turned out to be, and speaking of which, why did you lie about my godchild being dead for more than a decade, Jiraiya? Tsunade cracked her knuckles which had Jiraiya get a safe distance from his teammate's reach. You were drunk, Tsunade, you couldn't take care of a baby nor yourself without Shizune or me there. I needed to continue working my spy network to find Orochimaru and those who wished Konoha harm by using the biju. He should have been safe in Konoha and made bonds with the people. Most of the citizens would rather see me dead than be their friend or duty bound protector. Granny fixed my voice that these idiots were responsible for but were only given a slap to the wrist then be hanged for harming the Hokage's child, said Naruto, which surprised Jiraiya and the civilian council that he could speak again. What do you mean, demon brat? You are not related to the third. You can't call yourself the son or grandson of the Hokage's, a merchant council member shouted in protest. Jiraiya grew pale that Naruto knew his lineage and looked at Tsunade and Serutobi sensei to see if they told, they merely shook their heads in silence to tell the toad sage that someone else shared the truth to Naruto, but who? Jiraiya thought in aggravation. Wrong, 
My full name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze, your beloved fourth. I hope to announce this during the Chunin exams, but letting the council know first made it happen sooner. My father sealed the Kaiubi to keep your misbegotten lives, only to spit on his grave by scarring and hurting his living legacy. Naruto proves this by raising his hand and forming the signature Rasengan before letting it dissipate. That shut them up and had Jiraiya flipping inside that he was not there to teach him this, but he still had the toad summons and other jutsus that he could bribe the boy, it's true he is the son of my student, which is why I also come to give him the chance to sign the toad contract like his father did and become as great a hero as his father was, as soon as you let me see the seal. Naruto barely gave the perverted toad sage an inch as his hidden familiar tattoo lights up and Kendra appears coiled around his arm the size of a python with her safety lenses on. The council and the pervy sage jumped back in terror at the strange snake that hissed so loudly at Jiraiya and glared her eyes among the civilians and the elders of the council, Tsunade and Naruto were smirking inside to see them jump scared, imagining if Naruto decided to let Kendra show her real size. What is this? Are you in league with the traitor, Orochimaru? Or did that snake slut bend over to get you to sign the snake summons? demanded Kaharu. Your reports are outdated and false. The truth is the snake summons have not been in league with Orochimaru for several years now. Only a handful of snakes still follow that madman, only Anko and I are the sole summoners of the snakes, having given them a queen. This snake you see before you, as Kendra, she is a legendary serpent known as a basilisk, she is my familiar and bonded summon that allowed me to sign the snake contract and get Anko and the snakes back into the good light of the shinobi world, soon there will be new snake sages in Konoha, and they will be the king and queen of snakes. Naruto proudly proclaimed with Kendra hissing in agreement. Danzo felt the Jinchuriki was growing too powerful as he tried to use his hidden Sharingan on the snake because the Sharingan could not work on Naruto's hidden eyes that were covered. Unfortunately, Kendra felt the Warhawk's actions and let some of her power slip a little. Causing the leader of Root to keel back in pain feeling that Shisui Sharingan was strained and almost ready to die, Danzo was irked that this mysterious snake may be more powerful than the legendary eyes of the Uchiha. He would need to research before trying to usurp Naruto or the beast. Sadly, all notes on basilisks were with the snake summons and kept under guard, lock, and key by the white snake sage at Ryuchi Cave. Jiraiya was perplexed that Naruto would rather have the snakes than his father's trusty toads, but Naruto, your father would have wanted you to have the toad summons, you can't trust the snakes. I trust snakes and foxes more than I trust toads due to the fact that snakes are tight lipped when mentioning prophecies. The toad summons have broken the laws passed down by the gods that summons may only reveal certain revelations when their summoners pass a series of trials and or are granted permission by the gods to share such prophecies. My father may have been a good summoner for the toads, but I am not him, still, I will honor my parents by mastering and improving their techniques and bring back the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans, the Kyubi and I are aligned in our goals for the future and they do not pertain in destroying the leaf village unless provoked replied Naruto which scared Jiraiya and the council that the Kyubi has tainted the child already. Lock him up and throw away the key. We can't let the demon escape and try to kill us again, shouted a council member. Other civilians and shinobi of the council hollered their own suggestions on what should be done with Naruto until the Hokage released his killer intent to shut them up. Silence. The Yamanaka clan head and I have met the biju within Naruto and have conversed with it, the biju was released from Kashina by a masked shinobi that held a unique Sharingan reminiscent of Madara's, it was not in control of the suffering and destruction it wrought all those years ago, Hiruzen filled in, silence settled the council room as they digested on this new bit of information. Are you certain of this, Hokage-sama? asked Danzo. The mind cannot lie to a Yamanaka, Danzo, we saw what through the memories of the biju and Naruto by their permission and it was the truth. Some rogue shinobi is out there with a Sharingan that is as strong as Madara Uchiha's that was not a part of the Uchiha clan that was massacred, spoke Inoichi. Then what do we do when this perpetrator comes to reclaim his weapon? asked the advisor Homura. Train and prepare. My old teammate, Naruto and Team 9 will partake in the Chunin exams to show their strength and resilience for future endeavors. Once Naruto proves that he is of Chunin rank material, he and Anko will complete the trials of the snake summons to become full-fledged sages that will increase Konoha's power, Naruto will also claim his inheritance and family compound to bring back the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans once he's proven to be Chunin, our enemies will not be so insistent to go to war with us when the living legacy of the Red Death and the Yellow Flash will surpass them both, do you not agree? said the third Hokage as the councils whispered to one another. After whispering for five minutes the councils won by a major vote that Naruto and Team 9 would be allowed to compete in the Chunin exams, the Hokage then dismissed Naruto, Kendra, 
and Tsunade with the rest of the members of the council exiting as well, leaving Danzo, Jiraiya, and Hiruzen left in the room. You are playing a dangerous game, my rival, I hope that this Jinchuriki will not bite us behind our backs like Orochimaru did. Danzo gave his words of warning before leaving to his hidden root center to plan for his succession in claiming the Hokage seat. Sensei, I was supposed to train Naruto so he could fulfill the prophecy, now he seems to be the second coming of my fallen teammate and may betray Konoha when we least expect it. Jiraiya spoke with an anxious expression. What's done is done, Jiraiya. I myself have suffered the consequences of trying to control destiny and look where it has gotten us, we must let Naruto decide how he will fulfill his destiny and give him help when he needs or asks it. I am just glad I could regain his trust in me in the will of fire, I've seen that he will change Konoha and the elemental nations for the better, even though I may not live to see it, my age is finally catching up with me, Hiruzen said solemnly. Sensei, Jiraiya hated to see the third Hokage like this, he reverse summoned himself to mount, Mayoboku to discuss with the toads what can be done to get Naruto back on their side while preparing for Orochimaru's attack on Konoha. Scene change well, I am glad that's over. Do you want to come to my place or rejoin your team at Anko's place? Asked Tsunade as they were out of Hokage Tower and walking along the road, Naruto had sent Kendra back to the Ryuchi cave while he thought on his godmother's inquiry. Before Naruto could give an answer, he suddenly heard Gigi's grandson cry for help. Naruto met Konohamaru during his training with Team 9 and decided to help the future Hokage by showing him the shadow clone Jutsu. The energetic boy was wowed by Naruto's sword, eyes, and techniques that he took a shine to Naruto and calling him boss. Naruto felt that Konohamaru could fulfill the Hokage dream he gave up on and would be a great one. Naruto found Konohamaru being held by Asuna Shinobi that came early for the Chunin exams. The male sand ninja was wearing black attire and face makeup while carrying a mummified object strapped to his back. He looked pissed about something Konohamaru did hand was pulling on the young Serutobi's hairs while his teammate, sister tried to calm him down. I don't care, Tamari. This little punk needs to learn not to talk to me like that," said the one called Konkuro. But before the ninja could pummel the little squirt, Naruto appeared next to them with his katana out that was barely touching Konkuro's face. I apologize if my young disciple had offended you, Shinobi-san. You should nt have to use force on the Hokage's grandson who is still too young to compete in the Chunin exams, save your strength," said Naruto. Konkuro was sweating like crazy before he dropped Konohamaru who ran to Tsunade's and Naruto's side, uh, right, my bad, Konkuro quickly apologized as Naruto put his sword away. Wow, that was so cool, boss. You know how to make a cool ninja entrance with your blade and wearing that blindfold over your eyes, commented Konohamaru before getting a goose egg courtesy of Tsunade. It's all about manners and training your butt off, Konohamaru, but tell me, how did you get yourself tangled by that Tsuna ninja? Naruto asked. Konohamaru scratches his head before giving his sheepish reply, well, I was running away from the pink-haired banshee after I commented how big her forehead looked, and then I didn't look where I was running into when I bumped into that makeup-wearing ninja. Tsunade and Kakuro's sister, Tamari, tried to hide their laughter at Konkuro who was irked at that. It's not makeup, it's war paint, he cried dramatically. Then wouldn't have been better to use red or black for your face? I mean if your skin was pale white, I even might have mistaken you for a mime or some sort of ninja clown that kills his opponents by screams or laughter, said Naruto which causes the women to laugh out loud and put Konkuro under a depressing cloud. Where is he? shouted the familiar voice of Sakura as she ran into their area, Konohamaru quickly hid behind Naruto while Naruto kept his protege out of sight from his former crush. Hello, Sakura, how have you been? I heard you and Team 7 were very lucky in saving Wave Country and standing up against the Demon of the Hidden Mists, commented Naruto. Oh, not bad. Sasuke kun saved me from Zabuza's apprentice while Kakashi sensei killed Zabuza. Now Sasuke has awakened his Sharingan and will become a powerful ninja in no time. By the way, who are you ninja? And why are you here? Asked Sakura, who was blindsided by them, which allowed Konohamaru to escape without her noticing, making Naruto smile at his protege, improving on his stealth skills. Don't you know? We are here to compete in the Chunin exams that's starting next week, didn't your sensei tell you about this? said Tamari. Don't be too harsh on her, Kunoichi san. Sakura and the last loyal Uchiha have the infamous Kakashi Hataki as their sensei, who is known for being a big procrastinator in Konoha. I think he will inform them later today once he's done wandering the roads of life. My team will be competing in the Chunin exams as well. Can we forget the past transgressions and reintroduce ourselves? said Naruto. You first, Blondie, 
You already know my brother Konkuro, and I want to know the name of my mysterious shinobi that wields a unique weapon just like my giant iron war fan before I share mine, said Tamari. Of course, Naruto then surprises them by showing his eyes that have their protective lenses on. I am Naruto Uzumaki, my teammates you'll meet later once the Chunin exams start, and my blade's name is Orochi Kotomi, he was a gift from the snake summons that I am contracted with that do not consider Orochimaru as their summoner no more, Naruto introduces to them. And what about your eyes? Were you born that way or were they a gift from your summons? Asked Tamari. Ah, 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 you first need to tell me your name Kunoichi-san, and maybe the name of your fan if you have given it one, teased Naruto. Sakura and Konkuro were blanching at Naruto's flirting while Tamari blushed in embarrassment before she recomposed herself and introduced herself. My name is Tamari, I am one of the Keizkage's children that will prove that my Tasuki Hoshi will blow away the competition, a n meaning moon star because her fan forms three moons that she seems to call them stars. An adept name, my eyes were a gift from my summons since I lost my old eyes from a mob attack when I was little, explained Naruto which caused Tamari and Konkuro to flinch which perplexed Naruto. His answer came when Suna's third teammate, revealed himself hanging upside down from the nearby tree which then landed near Naruto and stared with a frowning look on his face, I am Gara. your eyes are quite interesting, just like your blood, I hope you can satisfy mother when ill fight you and your team, remarked Gara, which caused his siblings to shudder while Naruto was told by Kurama on what Gara was. He's the Jinchuriki of my one-tailed brother, Shukaku, a real nutcase that one, watch yourself, Naruto, warned Kurama. Naruto smiled at that, then I hope Mama One can handle Big Bro Nine when we fight to see who is the strongest among us, his vague reply had Gara surprised before calming down as he walked away with his group. Unfortunately, Sasuke was also listening on this and landed in front of Gara to show his Uchiha might, and I am Sasuke Uchiha, and I will be the strongest fighter in the Chunin exams, so you'd be better fighting against me than the loser, said Sasuke. We shall see was Gara's only reply as he and his team walked past the elite who was irritated by being brushed off like that before turning his anger at Naruto. So that's what you look like under that blindfold of yours, it doesn't scare me, loser. For the Sharingan are the most powerful eyes in the elemental nations, proclaimed Sasuke as he showed his one-wheeled Sharingan to intimidate him. Naruto simply remains quiet before taking his godmother by the hand and body flickers in a whirl of water to the forest of Death Tower where the rest of his team were. He wanted to tell them the good news that they were given the green light to the Chunin exams while having Tsunade stay for dinner as they relaxed for the rest of the day, not knowing that Jiraiya was planning on doing something drastic to get Naruto to stick to his way of thinking using memory suppression seals and making shady deals with Danzo so Konoha can remain standing in their minds. Thanks for watching.